Hi all, in this video I'm going to go through the test options you have when you're building a Blackboard test. So when you first created a test you would have the name and description and information already set up. Uh, of course you can change them right now, you can change the color if you really want, but the more important thing would be deciding whether you want to show the description and instructions to the student before they start the test. In most cases, I assume you would. The only thing to consider is if you have any kind of a file attached within there, maybe something you don't want the student seeing until they start the test. Maybe it's some context for some of your questions. In that case, it might be important to not show it, but otherwise you probably want to show it. Open a new window, you don't have to do that. Uh, making it available to students, that is very important. This is something that a lot of people can actually get confused. Later on, we'll see that there's settings that enable when the test becomes available, but you still have to make sure it is available here. Otherwise, that overrides all the later settings. You can have an announcement sent out, so let your students know the test is available. Um, most cases, I wouldn't bother. And you can also choose how many attempts they get. Maybe you only want them to have one try. Maybe you want to give them two attempts or maybe you want unlimited attempts. It might depend on the actual test you're doing. Maybe this is a homework assignment where you want them to have a couple tries. Maybe you're worried students will mess up. But if you do give multiple attempts, you also have to decide how you're gonna grade them. Do you wanna just grade their last attempt or their highest, their lowest? It's up to you. You can also do, you can see, an average of graded attempts. Force completion. This sounds okay, but is a very bad idea. You never want to choose this setting because what it means is if a student gets disconnected, even for say five seconds, they cannot get back into this test. If you're trying to limit the scope of when the student takes the test, you're likely better off using a timer because what you can do is maybe you want to give your students a 60 minute test. Great. Well, what will happen is if they get disconnected temporarily, they just lose the amount of time they're disconnected. So let's say they're disconnected for a minute, they lose that minute, but they can rejoin back into that test and actually start back up from the point they left off. I would recommend doing auto submit just so that if they get to 60 minutes and haven't clicked submit, it will submit for them. Otherwise you're off to go in and submit it for them, which is a bit of a pain. Now, I'd said that if they come back in, they can actually, if they get disconnected, they can come back into the test, but you have to be a little careful with the display dates for that. So what I can do is decide maybe I want the test to show up at eight in the morning and be available till the end of the day. Or from, in my case, 1.54, nah, let's say 1 a.m. to 11.59, that's when it would be available. Great. So it'll become available at this time, but remember, if a student gets disconnected, if they start the test at say 11.50, great, they have 60 minutes from the time they start. But if they get disconnected and it's past this 11.59, even though they still might have time left on the clock, they will not be able to get back in and finish their attempt. So you have to be a little careful with that and you might want to be online to help work as a student reset their attempt or something or extend the window if they're going to get disconnected. Or just advise your students to start an hour before the end time so if they get disconnected they can get back in because at this point the test would disappear at 11.59. Again, a student could start at 11.58 and still have 60 minutes. The problem is if they get disconnected the test has disappeared they can't get back in. If I want I can set a password. Most people wouldn't bother using this. Test availability exceptions. Some of your students might have exceptions. Might be that they need time and a half. Well that's something you could do right here. If I click add a user or group, I could have a preset group of people that I know get extra time, or maybe I have a specific user. In my case, the preview user, I'm going to select that and I can choose to give them more attempts than other students, or I can increase the time. Maybe this is a student who gets time and a half. Great. I can choose to give them 90 minutes. I can even use this to give different students a different availability window. Maybe there's a student for some reason who needs this test extended out for a few extra hours. By clicking in, I can actually let them either get to the test earlier or later. So this would be an exception just for this student. Maybe they had it available yesterday and we'll have it all the way till the first at, I don't know, let's say noon. That would be an exception for just this student, and then I can add as many exceptions as I want. I can also specify a due date, uh, especially again, maybe you're using this as an assignment in, of sorts. I could say it's due at a certain time, maybe Thursday at 5 p.m., something like that. 
Now, you have to be a little careful with this do not allow students to start the test date. You could choose this setting, but you run into the same problem as above, where if they actually start the test right before the due date and then get disconnected, if you said they can't start the test again, they won't be able to go back in and resume their attempt. So you have to be a little careful with this setting. You can also have self-assessment options. Um, basically, whether you want this to show up in the grade score or not, do you want this calculated as part of their overall grade? Now, even if you enable this, what I would suggest is you want to hide that grade center column uh, in your grade center. Otherwise, if you have something like a multiple choice test, the students will likely start being able to see the score after their attempt, and you likely don't want that. So you might want to hide the grade center column until you're ready to make it available. You also have to be a little careful with this hide results for this test completely. Uh, maybe you want to just do a formative assessment where you never need to see the results, great. But the thing to watch is that it says right here to protect the privacy, if you choose this, you can't undo this without deleting all attempts. So you got to be very careful. Most of the time, you're probably not going to select this. You can choose how the students see the results and when. Is it right after their submission? Maybe you want them to see the score they got. Maybe you want them to see all the answers, what they got right, what they submitted, any feedback you might have put, um, or you might choose that they can only see it once. Of course, be a little careful with that because it might still be that person takes a screenshot, so it's not that private. You could choose a specific date where it becomes available, or maybe after the due date, maybe after the availability end date, or more likely after the attempts are graded. Again, I still would recommend that you choose to hide the grade center column, uh, you can see you can also have two different setups. Well, maybe they get the score right after submission, but I don't want them to get the answers until after the due date. And finally, we have the test presentation. A lot of people are going to be tempted to use the one at a time setting. That is not ideal at all. It seems great because they only see one question at a time, and you might even prohibit backtracking so that they can't go back, um, especially if you're doing an online assessment that's open book. The problem is if someone's internet is not very good, they're going to have to load every single page. You have 150 questions or 100 questions or 50 questions, they're loading a page 50 times, it increases the chances things can go wrong. So you're better off presenting them all at once. And finally, you can choose to randomize the questions as well. So maybe you have those 50 questions, you can randomize them so that different students would have a different order. Anyways, hopefully this helped.